all set to go? Well, firstly, uh, good, good afternoon. Uh, welcome. Uh, it's good to be here with uh, Erica Stanford, our education spokesperson, and uh, Angie Nicholas, our great MP for uh, Te Atatū. Chris Pink's in the house. Good to see you too. And we've got uh, Ruby Schmackel and Rosemary Burke and Agnes Lohenny as well. So good to have you all here. Um, look, we're here in East Stork. Can I also say a very big thank you, sorry, to uh, the team uh, at Best Start here, Luke and to Kylie. Thank you so much for hosting us here at your place. Uh, we so appreciate seeing it, and congratulations on what you've built. You've built a wonderful culture and a wonderful environment for kids to start their education and start learning in. Uh, but we're here in West Auckland today with parents of young kids, and right now parents like these are under huge pressure, and they're working incredibly hard. They're struggling with mortgage increases, they're struggling with rent and food and fuel prices going up, and they're also struggling with childcare. And as you've seen today, uh, we've even seen further increases in the price of food, up another 8%. Food is up almost 30% under this government, uh, um, which is again making it incredibly tough for families to manage their own household budgets. To all of you, we say help is on the way, because National is going to help you. We're going to rebuild the economy so that we can actually lower the cost of living, lower inflation, lower interest rates. We're going to deliver you tax relief uh, and a family boost childcare tax credit. We're going to restore law and order so you can feel safe in your home, in your community, and we're going to improve schools and healthcare as well. And if you feel like nothing has been delivered for you over the last six years, this election is an opportunity for change. And in fact, public polls show that there is a mood for change, but to get that change, you actually have to choose it and to make it happen. So if you want that change, if you want action and you want delivery on the issues that are important to you and your family, please go out and give your party vote to National. There are two and a half days of voting left. National has the momentum, we have the plans, we have the energy and the ideas to take our great country forward. So I want you to choose to wake up to a better future on Sunday morning. The country that the kids in the centre and across New Zealand will grow up into a country shaped by the party vote of this election. Make it a better New Zealand right now and party vote national. With that, have you taken any questions, Mayor? Have... This morning was very critical on your what he called record on race relations, saying that he saw shades of 2005 with Tom, Don Brash, Iwi versus Kiwi. He said that if Chris Luxon wins, Māori loses. What's your response to that? Well, what I'd say is um, if, if, if National win, Labour loses, and that's a very good thing for the, for New Zealand. Uh, what we see really, I mean, Chris, is a, Chris Hipkins is a very, very desperate individual now, and he has been throwing muck at walls for weeks on weeks, just seeing what sticks, and I just think that's a pretty low blow. But in terms of the whole racial element of this, the shades of 2005, I mean, he's saying that you're going to be bad for Māori. Well, I disagree. You know, National governments and Māori have worked incredibly well together. Over the last six months, the last three months in particular, I've been doing quietly one-on-one -on -one sessions with iwi leaders uh, across the country. Uh, I am very confident we're going to work and partner together incredibly well to get things done for Māori and non-Māori. You know, Māori you know, outcomes haven't improved under this government. You know, and so we need to actually go to work and partner with Māori organisations to actually deliver those services, whether it's healthcare, whether it's education, a range of services, infrastructure we've been talking about, housing we've been talking about with them. Uh, and I think that's going to be really exciting and a very productive partnership. Have any community leaders raised concerns with you about David Seymour's attitude towards Māori? Uh, not, not really. Uh, my conversations have been about the way that we want to work, which is that I've talked about this many times before. I think philosophically I want to see a different way of working, which is that we have government that sets the rules and the enablers up. We have community organisations see the pain, the hurt, the need, the frustration are often best to deploy locally. Uh, and we also have businesses that can move with great speed and scale. And I want business, community and government to be the three actors in our society that work together. And I'm very confident we're going to work incredibly well with Māori. Um, you know, again, I was... I was reflecting actually, we were talking to, to some iwi leaders on, in um, Tarafati and you know, we were just talking about the response from, from the iwi organisations in the emergency situation was just fantastic. It was before, we got, before, before it was even organised nationally. Uh, we've talked in, in, um, in the Wellington region about infrastructure and housing in particular and how iwi organisations want to partner and get involved with that. Um, so we've got a lot of work to do, uh, but we are going to deploy through community organisations, through iwi organisations in order to get outcomes. Bilingual signs today. Is he misrepresenting you? Yes, I have to say he is. Um, you know, I've said very strongly I support uh, bilingual signs. I've lived in Canada where it was English and French. I lived in the States where it was English and Spanish. It's going to be okay as long as people can actually navigate whichever language they choose, it'll be fine. Uh, I just say to you again, I think he's just grasping at straws, and it's, and it's actually quite sad to be honest. Um, that in the death throes of this government, you know, they literally are just throwing anything to see what sticks. And I think, I think, you know, I just say to you today, 
You know, there are families that today, on the back of those food prices, who are really struggling. I have met parents. I have met parents who say they skip meals occasionally in order to afford food for their parent, for their, for their kids. Would I've you... gone to food banks up and down this country. I am telling you, there are people there that are have got good jobs and average incomes who still can't get ahead and feel really ashamed about being it. Those are the issues that we should be talking about in this campaign, not dinosaurs, not just throwing mud at wall and seeing what sticks. Yeah, you like oh, I love dinosaurs. You're Don't you worry, I love a good dinosaur. Um, dinosaurs. Particularly, uh, particularly the camp. Campaign Raptor and the uh, the tax relief of source uh, coming to a town near you shortly. Um, well, look, I mean, we've Tamapotaka has done a brilliant job of actually getting around and understanding the issues with Māori. We've been meeting with them individually ourselves, uh, and we want to push on and actually get things done. Uh, we've what been we've been largely supportive of the investment. We've been largely supportive of the investment across, if I think about, you know, across Māori development uh, portfolios. Um, but we need to get delivery, and that's what we're going to do. What are you going to? Well, we we actually it's, we want to improve outcomes for Māori and for non-Māori. And when you talk to Māori, what are their number one issues? Cost of living, housing, education, healthcare, law and order. Same issues. And so we're going to make sure we deliver and partner with Māori organisations to get better outcomes because that's what we need to do. What, do what are you going to say to, to David place? Seymour when he says to you in the coalition talks that he wants a discussion about taking the treaty back to the before the Robin Cook Appeal Court decision in 1987, which enshrined partnership? as a fundamental principle of the treaty? Well, look, I mean, it's not our policy. We don't support a referendum. We think that actually would be divisive for New Zealand. Um, but look, I'm telling you, you know, David Seymour and I have a good personal relationship. National Act have worked well before. We have very good alignment on the major issues that New Zealanders care about, which is rebuilding this economy, restoring law and order, delivering better health and education. And so we might have different means by which we deliver those outcomes and those goals, but we actually are aligned on those goals. But he would says that that particular issue is his number one issue. Um, well, again, it's not our position, and we'll have that conversation in a very constructive, responsible side, uh, way and as we all um, go through coalition arrangements. But, again, you're getting way ahead of yourselves. I mean, we've got two and a half days where New Zealanders get to shape what happens in the next three years. And I'm telling you, a, a Greens to party Māori, you know, a Labour coalition, after a Labour government that hasn't done anything with an absolute majority and delivered for New Zealanders, is not what Kiwis want. They want on, change. On that, would a National Act New Zealand... First government be stable? Yes, yes. I back myself to make that work and be very stable. And I think all the parties would be incredibly focused on delivering for New Zealand. Would what a government made up of those three parties survive the term? Sorry. Would you survive the term with those three parties? Yes, I believe we would. Yes. The whole three years. Yes. Taking grand something that you would consider. Uh, no, I don't think we want to be in partnership with the Labour. And, and, and just, just looking. You could, what, what on earth makes you think that you could give a guarantee that a government with Winston Peters would be stable? Because I, I back myself to be able to, to, to make it work. Um, you know, let's be clear, we are focused on the New Zealand people. We have some serious issues in this country. I think the other political leaders will understand that they're acting in New Zealand's interests, and that's what we're putting before our own interests. And I also have worked with you know, large executive teams with some pretty big personalities. We've turned the National Party around with its big personalities. Uh, and I can say to you, I think I'll do a better job than Chris Hipkins can't even manage his own cabinet. In, uh, so, in, so, so, so no disrespect, but I back myself to make it work. I came here to do this job, to get it sorted, to get the country focused, and to deliver for New Zealanders, and we'll make it work. Taking moves to index benefits to inflation rather than wages. Why have you decided to change back like that? Yeah, I mean, historically the position was always that we index um, benefits to inflation and the cost of living, um, and then the government moved it away to average after tax income, so and then, then in a high inflation environment moved it back to inflation again. And so, to be honest, it's the best long-term metric to make sure that people's purchasing power is not eroded, that actually a similar basket of goods can be bought with the same amount of money if you've got regular inflation-adjusted increases in benefits. So every year benefits will be increasing every year though? by the amount of inflation. Is that true when actually they would still rise with wages and at a higher rate? Um, well, well, again, I'd say to you that was the thinking of this government and we've seen high levels of inflation where actually wages have not kept pace with inflation. We, 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 we will be driving inflation down, be under no illusions around that, but we just think the long-term best way to do it is to lock it in around inflation adjustments if, if so that, that people are no worse off and that actually people can afford the, product, the costs of, of, of products as they rise with inflation. If, if they're concerned if, about National's position when it comes to beneficiaries, 
Is your government going to be cruel to beneficiaries? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Our government's going to create opportunities for beneficiaries. First and foremost, there will be benefit increases each and every year. They will be based on inflation, so purchasing power is protected. But importantly, but I just say second, secondly, what I just say to you is that we need to grow this economy and we need to create powerful jobs because actually a pathway off welfare and into work has to be our goal. And when we see a government that has put 60,000 more people on unemployment, that's unacceptable. Sorry, I haven't, I haven't read their policy. Basically, it, it puts the benefit payments onto an electronic card where they can only buy food and petrol and not alcohol or tobacco. Um, what we have said under our tra uh, traffic light system, particularly if you know, we talked about unemployment benefits, you might remember the other day, if the obligations are not being held up, uh, then we will use money management as a sanction if you end up in the if, red category, for if, example. If, okay. tying, if tying benefits. The party, part of that says the Act Party bringing it in if a, if a woman has an extra child on a benefit. Do you see there, there being a purpose of needing to put that in place well, simply because a woman gets pregnant? No, no, pregnant? that's not, no, and that's not our policy. What our policy is is very simply saying, in the cases where we have, as we talked the other day, you know, we want to have a traffic light system on unemployment benefit. You've got two obligations: either looking for a job right now, and you, you and or otherwise you're getting ready to get ready for one. Uh, that's if, a pretty simple thing. The New Zealand taxpayer is helping you in a tough time, but actually, if, if you don't if, meet those, if if, if time. Well, again, I'm not getting into that. We're not negotiating coalition uh, governments through the media. What we're saying right now is, what, what I'd say to you is, yeah, I, I do think it is punitive. That's why it's not our policy. But what, I, what we are happy to do is to have money management uh, for people who are not holding up their obligations. I think that's entirely fair. Entirely if, tying, fair. if tying benefits to inflation rather than wages is the best thing to do, why did you not do that with super? Uh, because that's an entitlement that you know it's, we believe in universal super. It's been that, that but, way but for a long time. But do you think it undermines your argument argument for tying beneficiary benefits to inflation rather than wages if you have the two different treatments? Of but the two? but because superannuation has always been tied to after tax income. Benefits have always been tied to cost of living and inflation increases up until just recently, and then they reverted back again to how it was historically. Yep. And so, all we're saying for beneficiaries, we want beneficiaries to make sure they have purchasing power, that that's protected by inflation adjusting cost of living each and every year. More importantly, we are going to take people off welfare and get them into work because it is not good and it is not fair having people languish for a lifetime in welfare. That is not the way forward. And in the New Sub Leaders debate, you were asked whether you think Winston Peters is good or bad for New Zealand. You said you didn't know him. You've had time to consider it now. Is he good or bad? I'm very confident I'll be able to do business with him if but I need to do so. Is he good or is he bad? I'm very confident I'll be able to do business yet with we've him. Yet we've come back to this point. Is he good or bad for New Zealand? Yeah, and my point is I'll be able to work with whatever leader, the New Zealand people, or the, whatever combination of people Why give us you on answer Saturday that night. Just, just, that's, well, that's my answer. I can work with whoever. Just taking as read that you don't want to work with Winston, you've said that many times, the polls look like you're going to have to give him a call. So can you give New Zealanders an ironclad guarantee that this coalition arrangement, whether it be with ACT or it be with New Zealand First or both, won't drag out for months? Can you actually give us a timeline of how long it's going to take well, if you can form a we government? Are, we are two and a half days out from an election. The New Zealand people are in charge now, yeah. not, the, not the political leaders. They get to choose that, what happens, right? Could, it's important that people sure, know before they vote sure. that they're not going to be waiting months for a sure. government to be so we, we, But we don't know what the outcome or the results are. There is uncertainty with the MMP, and there's also side. going to be a close election. You so can tell us how long it's going to take. You're the captain. You can make the call now that it's not going to take months. Can you give us a timeline? Yes, and I, Jason, that's what I, I don't, don't come each day just to muck around. I come here to do things, and after Sunday, we've got a lot of work to do, and we'll be going to work very, very quickly. Just back. And because it's important, because the country is losing its way incredibly quickly. So I will work as fast as I can. And, and making sure we get strong, stable coalition government on the other side. Just, just I am very confident pieces. in my ability to do that. I have led teams before, I have formed teams before, they've been very effective, and, I'm, and I've got no doubt we're going to stay very focused on the New Zealand people and delivering for them. Just, are, just, are you unable to answer it definitively because you have no idea how long Winston Peters might play the game for? He could actually wait until a by-election or as a result of so guys, I appreciate all the hypotheticals and the parlour games. I get all of that stuff. I know you're interested in that stuff. I'm telling you now, you're getting way ahead of yourself. We need to tell the New Zealand, the New Zealand people need to know they want change. There is a mood for change. I'm asking them to party vote for National. I've laid up and talked about the other parties that I want to work for, but what I want to do is to be able to fix the problems that matter to New Zealanders. And what New Zealanders are desperate no, for is lower interest rates, could, lower inflation. Do you think that by election could have an impact on how long it takes to form a government? 
I don't think so necessarily. What I'd say to you is that we want the people of Port Waikato to understand that there is an election this weekend. They need to party vote. That's very important. They understand that. Uh, and then we'll deal with the by-election on the other side. Just, just on Peters, just on Peters. Who would, you, who would you prefer? Just, come, would you sorry, pre- come here first. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, just on the Israel-Hamas um, conflict, should the government be arranging flights for New Zealanders outside of, of, out of leaving Israel? Um, it's something that we, that we should be open to considering. Um, again, our position on that, as you know, has been pretty um, staunch over the last few days, which is to say that you know, we condemn those attacks by Hamas on, on Israel. Um, the pain and suffering being caused by those civilian, by civilians is, is immense, uh, and we certainly stand beside Israel's right to defend itself. Should the government be working with Australia, um, who is China and China? Again, I'm not party to those conversations. I assume that foreign affairs are already having those conversations, consular services, um, uh, with the relevant parties. Has Israel gone to a partner's defence? Uh, we stand by Israel and its right to defend itself because they were, you know, um, unpro- you know un- un- unprovoked attacks that we completely condemn. Question up, colleagues. Uh, what is the first immediate thing National would do to help Kiwis with the cost of living? I'm going to provide tax relief to low and middle income workers in New Zealand because they have had it tough. That has been the unfairness in the tax system. Uh, everyone, you know, they are doing it really hard. And you've just got to talk to some parents here who are dealing with rapidly rising mortgage costs, rapidly rising ECE costs, uh, and that's what we're going to deliver. Are you still promising to raise the pension age and why? Yes, but I'd just like to clarify, given some of the misinformation out there, that it won't be till 2044 on its way to 2046. The reason is that New Zealanders live an extra year and a half every decade that progresses, and as a result that's the right timing for us to do it. How do you expect people to pay for that extra two years of living <laughs> if they can't access the pension? Uh, well, I'll just say to you, that is coming from some misinformation on the Labour side because there's a bit of a fair campaign going on that all of a sudden next year uh, you're, you're, we're shooting the retirement age up to 67. It's not until 2044 that it starts. It'll be completed by 2046. And I think that's entirely appropriate given that we're all living about a year and a bit longer every decade that progresses. And in terms of the appointment of Peter's demands, you keep the retirement age at 65. Will you do that? Again, not getting into any coalition arrangements and discussions uh, on this side of it. We need to make sure that New Zealanders understand if you want change, you need to step up to the plate, vote for that change, party vote national. Uh, Again, again, way too premature. We need to focus on actually New Zealanders have two and a half days to now determine what happens for the next three years in this country. We have a great country. We have a tremendous future, but this election matters, and that's why I want New Zealanders to be very intentional and purposeful with their party vote. And who would you you prefer as your deputy? Uh, Again. or Seymour. Again. It's a binary choice, Peter's <laughs> yes, or Seymour. Yes, and I, I, again, we're not getting into that uh, because we have an election to win over the next two and a half days. There are serious issues going on in this country, and I appreciate the parlour games and all, all the conversations are interesting to some of you, but out there, New Zealanders will actually want a government that's actually going to deliver for them, sort the economy out, restore law and order, deliver better health and education. New Zealanders want to know the shape of the government before they vote, vote for it? Well, we live in an MMP environment, right? And so the answer is that whatever the voter decides, that they're, they're always right. And then we as the political leaders are obligated to form a government and to make that work. All I can do is lay out my position on the parties that I would work with, that's what I've done, uh, and then we, we wait for the New Zealand people to deliver us an outcome and then we go make it work. How do you plan on? Week, the last few weeks surprised you, I mean there were a lot of polls for a while there that really showed National and National were going to be able to govern alone and New Zealand has come into play in the last few weeks particularly. Has it surprised you that I guess the National Act vote has kind of stagnated or even Oh no! I mean, what I wanted to say to you is um, there are a range of polls around. Uh, our focus has been very clear to say this is a really serious election. We want people to, to party vote national. That's really important. I've also laid up to say my preferred option is a government with less moving parts. Therefore, that's why you know a two-party coalition arrangement between national and act would be good. And what I've also said is, look, if need be, if people if people return New Zealand first to Parliament, it's necessary. I'll pick up the phone and try and form a government as well. Well, Mr. Peters and. Does it confuse you the closer we get to the election, the more people want New Zealand first to be part of the National Act agreement? Well, the New Zealand voters can choose who they wish. I mean, that's the point on this side of the election, is that we're all supposed to make our case for why we believe in our own principles, policies, plans and ideas. And that's what we're doing very strongly. We've done that through releasing a huge amount of policy. The Labour government, Labour Party's chosen to go negative and fear-mongering and scaring and, um, and personal, and that's their choice. Um, other parties all present their ideas. That's what we do. And then the New Zealand people make this decision. It's not, it's not us that makes it. You know, we, we work hard to make our case as to why I want people to party vote national, why I think we'd be the best government. But actually, at the end of the day, in an MMP environment, we are now obligated to go to make that work. And that depends on what the outcome is on Saturday night. How much is the growing support for New Zealand First 
a signal to you that people are freaked out by the policies of ACT and the right? Um, I, don't, I, I don't see it that way. I'm focused on the National Party and making sure they understand our policies, that they're actually going to give a family boost tax credit to help parents that are here today to deal with rising you know, childcare costs. They're actually going to get tax relief for lower middle income earners. Those are the things that I care about. That's what I'm focused on. What are your tax tax going into? Uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not Connie the commentator on polls. My job is to make sure I'm focused on delivering and communicating National Parties. Yes, and what, and what the mood of the people is, is they want a mood for change. That is quite obvious. Any public poll, any private polls that we see, people want change. And what we're saying is if you want change, you've got to step up to the plate and deliver it. And the best way to do that is a strong, stable, a national-led government uh, and to party vote national. What's your, tactics tonight? You What's your tactics tonight going into the one, the last leaders' debate? Are you going to go in all cylinders firing <laughs> or are you going to be a little bit more reserved? Oh, just look, I, in your party I, I, to be honest, I haven't thought about it. Um, yes, you have. You've thought about it. Come on. No, no, no. I, haven't, I, haven't, I mean, I'll, 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 I'm just going to be me. And that's what I'm going to do. And present our ideas as best I possibly can. Because I think New Zealanders, frankly, are a bit over all the personal negative, um, you know, fear-mongering stuff. I think they actually, they get this government hasn't delivered. They understand that the country's going backwards. They understand they want change. And I think it's about giving them a sense of what they're going to get on the other side. Do you concede the last time? No, I think I had a great debate last time. I really enjoyed it. It was a different format. Obviously, different facilitators bring different dynamics to a debate. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, New Zealanders make their decisions up on a whole range of factors. And the debate's an element of it, for sure. I appreciate for the political junkies it's a big deal, uh, but at the end of the day, it's about communicating ideas that will take New Zealand forward, and that's what we're going to do. Are you chilled? You're pretty chilled, mate. I am. Yep. Are you, are you, Always pretty relaxed. Are you yep. feeling quite well rested? You got up at 3 15 a.m. Uh, today was 4.20, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> but, but, but I get up, I get up at 4.30 every morning, so it's no problem for me. Uh, what time did you go to bed? Uh, sometimes late, uh, yeah, very late. When was last night? Uh, last night was about 11.30. That was quite early. Yeah. That's good. Function, good. Don't you worry. I've been. I, I've, I just am one of those people who needs very little sleep, and always have done since I was a little chap. So that's all good. Thanks awesome. So all right. Everyone. Thanks, team. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs>